Hi guys, uh, we're back on our high tech paraffin heater and we're going to look at well it might be servicing the, um, the heater or more likely you've got a fault and this could be an E4 fault which is probably the most the most common and um, yeah we're going to look at uh, exactly the main the main cause of, of, of these faults and uh, how we get the the paraffin heater to this condition to this situation without having to remove wires and um, and everything like that you know we, it's all nicely nicely presented to us like this and there's a uh, there's a fairly simple way of doing it. it's just a touch fiddly and I'll show you how it's done but first off uh, let's look at um, Let's look at, at what's happening here and how the uh, how the the heater works. And let me just um, zoom in. Okay. So what we have here at this side is the sparker, and that's going to um, ignite the the fuel. And here we have on this side, you can see here. The flame rod and this sits in the flame and uh, it senses um, the condition of the flame and thereby controls the amount of fuel that is being pumped in order to regulate the flame also if the flame goes out this will sense it immediately and it will cut off the pump Okay, so here, underneath the, the combustion chamber, it's an aluminium block, and um, it's initially heated by a coil, and the paraffin is injected into a basin. And this paraffin is, is then heated up by the, by the coil, and uh, until it gets to a certain correct temperature, um, where it's becoming a gas and the, the, the system recognizes when it hits the, the, the correct temperature and the sparks occur and they ignite it and uh, the flame uh, the flame rod then sits in the flame and this allows the ions to pass from the combustion chamber to the to the flame rod and depending upon the heat of the flame uh, is the amount of the ions that are passing and um, what is being read to to determine how much oil is pumped so if if this flame rod becomes um, covered in carbon then it modifies the reading of the flame it, still it's getting hot but it's preventing the ions from flowing um, or reading the ions flowing correctly so our main our main fault is simply that there's a carbon buildup on the flame rod or on the combustion chamber and grill and that's all now that's more likely to happen if you're using a cheap uh, fuel, um, kerosene grade, um, home heating oil grade, which is um, for fixed boilers, whereas the uh, purified uh, paraffin grade is for these um, portable machines. And uh, We'll look at using um, heating oil in another in another video um, to to save money because the the paraffin uh, the paraffin is is quite can be quite expensive. Um, it all appears certainly in Europe um, in big pile stockpiles in the supermarkets, and um, it can be like twenty six euros for twenty liters. So it's over over a euro a litre, you know, and it's heating it's heating fuel, you know, something 
something definitely wrong there. And you'll find different grades, or apparently different grades. I would recommend that you read the small print on the, on the containers. And what I would say is that any of the oil in these containers is going to be perfectly good enough. Uh, I, don't, I, I, I think it's just purely marketing in terms of um, how they're saying one is purified more than the other because they're all purified to a certain standard. So I would just go for um, the, cheap, the, 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 the cheapest of this high grade um, heating oil, the paraffin. Or like in France, they, it's called pétrole. If you are using a low grade oil, then there may be a greater chance of carbon buildup. But of course it could be saving you um, could be saving a load of money. I bought some recently for this and it was marked up at 23 euros and um, when I got to the cash out um, it was marked up at uh, 16 euros like 80 cents a litre and I thought that's much more like the money so I went back and got another the, the last one of that um, of that of that type in fact and um, so that was a deal I mean obviously these should, should be sold a, so much cheaper than than this but but anyway there we are so if you are if you are buying the high quality and um, an expensive oil this may cause less of a problem to you but either way if you're getting this uh, e4 error Here's the problem between here and here. And what you need to do is to strip the, um, the heater to this point where you can, you can get to it. Okay? And then it's just a matter of taking some wire wool and, um, and cleaning it back, you know. Um, and, uh, and while you're on, you can clean up the, uh, the grill if that's, um, if, if, if that's dirty. The combustion chamber top is held in place by three by three screws. Don't need to show you how to take the screws out. When you nip, when you're nipping it up, don't go mad because it's the screws are in aluminium. The screws screw into aluminium, and so you don't want to strip them of the what because then it's it's over basically. It's game over. Um, so you can remove the three screws. As you look down, you'll see the the the, the three screws. And um, it then can be wangled out like that. Underneath it has an aluminium gasket, so don't damage that. That should be fine. Okay. And um, yeah, you would be able to uh, to brush that up. On the on the top. It has got, and you can see that, yeah, it's got this I-50 and an arrow. The arrow always points to the sparker. Here's the, the sparker here. So the arrow always points to, to the sparker when you, when you reassemble. Right. Now this then provides us access to the flame rod. That comes out, oh, we can actually get that by wangling it to give us more space to get around. And then there's another primary grill. This which just 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 comes out. It's just just sat there, you know, like that. So in this way, we don't have to remove, using this, this, this method that I'm showing you now, you don't actually have to remove any complicated things. You don't have to remove cables or very little. And um, you can access everything. It's all presented very, very nicely. What I would say is as you go <coughs> with your vacuum cleaner, Ooh. You can use the uh, a brush and 
what you want to be doing is is vacuuming all the dust from everywhere, and you can you can brush and because the vacuum's on, it will any anything that's brushed up, it will just get be be sucked in. So a brush in a vacuum is um, it's a damn good idea, and you know you want to get rid of all the dust inside the um, the heater um, every time you um, every time you strip it. You know. Um, okay, so let's just have a have a little look, and um, so that you can see. around the touch here here is ooh, hang on a second sorry don't need the and I'll turn it again a bit there so we can see here is the aluminium well that is heated up and the the paraffin is injected into this well and we can see the remnants a little bit of leftover of the last of the last running is fine so I mean it's 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 quite clean is that as fine is that here we can see maybe if you can see Just turn it the there. there we can see the jet stuck out just there in the side okay just here that's what's squirting the the oil in shouldn't be any problem I mean if you if you if if you if, if you're filtering and and being careful with with dirt there should be no problem with that. Our problem is is with the flame rod, typically. Okay, but that's how it is. Not back. And just turn down again a touch. Okay. And um, and yeah. So um, in fact. You just try and find yourself um, a bit of uh, it's got to be some my hands on some relatively quickly. Some way will. And pull yourself a bit off, you know. And, uh, I mean, man's, man's clean, you know. There's no problem with it. You can use um, very fine carborundum paper, wet and dry, and uh, and clean off the surface. Just spend time with your uh, with your wire wool. Bring it back to new. If you were, if we were using a bit of uh, a bit of wet and dry,
Okay? I mean, it's sparking from this side. There's nothing. There's no real worry about the back. And really, it's the same with the ions. It's coming from this side, jumping from the combustion chamber to the flame rod. Okay, so that's easy. And uh, yeah. For the um, for the other side, it's obviously you need to be looking at, at this side and we know that it's um, from the arrow we know exactly where we're looking and um, and you can clean you can clean uh, this up if if there's a um, if there's a build up and uh, mine isn't bad as I say but while you've got it off you can and give it a clean and the top similarly the um, the top it's looking a lot better And uh, if you want to know exactly, you can just pop it back in place, and you know exactly where it's uh, where it's in contact. So the the, the main area uh, w would be here where the ions are flowing. So you'd look at that area particularly and see that it's entirely clean. And um, yeah, you could you would be able to use. Um, um, a copper a copper wire brush a little fine copper wire brush to, uh, to clean it off if the if the toothbrush wasn't working away but but yeah you know which just, just giving a bit of a clean up and that's it you know we can we can we can reassemble you know once you've got all the dust out and everything then it's just a case of um, of, of of reassembly and uh, it's going to work you know you've solved the problem um, because you might be thinking, oh God, it's the it's the it's the pump which is which is down here. Here's the pump, and here's the um, the copper feed to the to the injector. And you might be thinking, oh, it's the it's the pump that's failing, it's not sending the right amount of of, um, of of juice out, you know. But no, in fact, you know, it's all just down to this flame rod being dirty, and maybe the uh, combustion chamber, you know. Um, and that's all. Okay, so getting to this point, slightly fiddly, you know, that's all, slightly fiddly. Um, you've got to take off the top and um, on this model which is the, um, it's the Squall BPE367. Um, it's got three screws at the back, but it has one self-tapper here, just here. So you take the three out, you can't see it, that's down like that, and it won't come, you know. So take the three out, and then don't forget 
to lift that and then just sort of hold it just there like that and that will expose the self tapping screw all right that you can then put into one of your save pilchard tins or whatever you know like that um, the control panel on the top you'll see when you when you here's the control panel you'll see in fact there are clips here four clips okay now with this it comes this comes out up like this then you just twist it and drop it back down so no need to um, worry about um, pulling out this delicate um, ribbon connector just simply it comes out and then you you drop it back through so okay that's that's it you'll see how how that goes and that's to get the, uh, the, the, the the top off <coughs> This is your your problem one. How to get how to get this out and leave this here standing. Well, the first thing that you have to do is you have to turn this round. Okay. First thing to do is to remove the fan. And this gives you a chance to then clean off the dust on it, and it's removed by four screws. That comes off, and it then allows you access to another four screws that you'll see. And these four screws, these hold the back of the box. Can we see? One, two, three, four. Okay. You can either support this or you can then put that back on. I mean, I left it off because you get more light in and you can see you can see better. But uh, you'd have to support it because there's um, there's a cable attached. Okay. I think that's and yeah and, and obviously clean all the dust off and everything. Um, now, let's bring it back round again. Okay. There is an additional screw here. One screw at the front. Okay, so it's four at the back and one screw at the front. And then there are these little nibs here that just stick into these holes mm -hmm. there they are and that locks it in place right okay so the key is now you, you know you'll, you, you, you'll do all that you'll take all that off and you'll oh my god it's not coming be careful you know this is loose you can see that it's loose and we want to, to, to leave that unaffected all right You've done everything just with a Phillips screwdriver. Everything. One Phillips screwdriver. Most of the screws are exactly the same. So you've taken off four at the back and you've taken off this one screw here. Now, what you do is you insert the screw in between here and the base okay you squirt insert it in and twist and this then prizes the box up and loose okay the fiddly bit is that you cannot pull it out at this moment all right you have to push it backwards. You have to push it backwards. Okay. So, here it is, over this unit here, over this base. 
you must actually manoeuvre it. Once it's up, you push it back and then up. And then it can come out. Right. Because it's also down the back here. But there's no screw there. It's literally just clipped in place. So you lift and push it back and somehow, because of you've got this lip here for the fan, you have to avoid that. But as long as you know um, exactly this is how it works, you, you know, then you, you know what you're trying to achieve. You know it, com it comes off and you know that's how it comes off. And so you should be fine. It's just a little bit fiddly because this gets in the way and, you know, but you can pull that back and give yourself room for it to, to move backwards and then lift up. And then you're sorted. And then you can clean all the, 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 the dust out from that as well. And that's then out of the way. And um, be careful. It's got a gasket on the bottom. Okay. Just be careful of that. That damage it. There is some residue here, as you can see there. It's fine. Just be careful. Yeah, and that um, and that's how you um, how it's all displayed and um, easy to get at. Uh, it's well within the capabilities of anybody you know that's prepared to have a go. Um, yeah, keep all your. Um, there's the air filter, by the way. That's the air filter back. That always should be, be clean. When you clean the, the fuel filter um, down here, which we, which we did in, in another video, um, that's just a case of taking it out and brushing it and you know, uh, easy. But that should be done because that's your air filter. And uh, yeah, then, then, then reassemble, um, um, put it back and, and hey presto, you know. I mean, this didn't have an error error fault on it. I've just taken it apart to show you exactly how it's done. Alright guys, um, yeah, good luck with that. Alright, I'll, I'll see you later. Bye.